shown that uh, generic drug pricing in Canada has been a bit of an issue over the last uh, few years. This is just a proposal for how Canadian governments might actually be able to find rational prices for generic drugs. So the basic structure of what we have right now is typically that Ontario will set the price um, and they use a, a simple rule where they um, have a maximum reimbursable price, which is typically a fixed fraction of the reference brand price. Um, <clears throat> Ontario actually started off doing this. They said 75% uh, of the brand price would be a suitable price for generic drugs. Then after a few years, they discovered that was actually too high. Uh, eventually, they moved down to 50%, and then more recently, they've said oh, it should be 25%. Um, <clears throat> It's a very strange system. It's like saying the price of a small car should be the price of a Mercedes-Benz or something like that. It has nothing to do with cost, nothing whatsoever, and it's completely artificial and arbitrary. Naturally, some of these generic drug prices are going to be too high. Some are going to be too low. So <clears throat> I think as a bit of background, it's worth just pointing out that ordinary competition doesn't work very well. So you might say, oh, well, can't we just have competition? No, it, it really doesn't work very well. The problem is that insured consumers don't hunt for low prices, so pharmacies will exercise market power and essentially mark the price up to whatever is the maximum reimbursable price. So it doesn't matter how much competition there is between generic man drug manufacturers, they're just competing for the pharmacy, they're not trying to, and, and effectively, they're trying to provide the largest margin to the, uh, to the retailer, the pharmacy, who's able to um, then reap the benefits. So we get aggressive competition in many generic drug markets, but it isn't resulting in low retail prices. And what we really need is a solution that is going to preserve competition, but that also generates low prices. So just to provide a few examples, uh, just a couple of days ago, I went and looked at the Ontario formulary prices for a, a bunch of top-selling drugs. Uh, these are picked at random. And you can see how the pricing system works. Uh, Amlodipine, a 10 milligram pill, the brand was basically $2. So the generic is priced at 25%. That's the reimbursable price, 50 cents. Same thing for venlafaxine, ramipril, furosemide. You can see the uh, generic price is over one quarter. Uh, probably because the generic manufacturer said, oh, that, that's too low for us. We can't go down to 25% of that price. So <clears throat> you would think, because that's the way generic drug competition is supposed to work, th these, are, these are products with lots of generic manufacturers. These prices should be related to the cost of manufacture. Right? The generic drug companies don't actually have to develop the products from scratch. So basically, you, you would hope that the reimbursed prices are going to be something close to the cost of manufacturing, right? So what is the cost of manufacturing? I don't know. However, you can look at the federal supply schedule in the United States. That's the prices that the federal government is paying for drugs. This is what they're paying for these products. So wow, we've managed to reduce the price of amlodipine all the way to 50 cents. Is there something wrong with this? Yes, there really, really is. So <clears throat> there's roughly, uh, we're coming up to around $5 billion a year in generic drug spending. Um, <clears throat> clearly, if you actually went after, if you, if you get lower prices on some of those drugs, there could be large savings. So what's the proposal? Um, the proposal that I'm suggesting to you is that the, the price would essentially be determined by the number of generic entrants. So what we have right now is as soon as there's generic entry, the price drops to 25%. Um, I'm proposing that instead what we should do is have a system that emulates competition and the effects of competition. So if there's one generic, the price is say 50% of the brand, I'm not fixed on any of these particular numbers. If there were two generics, the price would drop. Three generics, it would drop further, and so on. And the price would drop for everyone. The reimbursable price would drop for everyone as the number of generic entrants increased. So why is this a reasonable approach? 
the idea is that firms will just keep on entering as long as the price is above their cost. So in other words, this is a system that's designed to drive price down towards marginal cost, just like regular competition. You have a system in which the first entrant would at least temporarily or might, might be rewarded with higher prices as long as too many other firms didn't enter. The system is attractive in that it reduces, in fact, eliminates the need for discretion by drug plan managers in cases when the claimed costs exceed 25% of the brand price, which does happen in quite a few products where the manufacturers will say, look, my true costs are really higher. Can't you give me a higher price? Here you don't need to do that because you start off with a high price and if more firms are willing to enter, you know that their costs must be lower. And uh, as I've uh, indicated to you, there are potentially some very large savings on some drugs. And I think uh, that in itself uh, has quite a lot of appeal in terms of uh, the sustainability. And you'll note that in terms of sustainability, this system is designed just to reflect costs which is exactly what we want in a competitive uh, generic system, um, setting. I want to point out that this is feasible and it's also easy to try. It's feasible because Ontario did have a system for quite a few years in which the drug price was initially set at 70% of the brand price, then if a second entrant came in, it was 63%. Then it, for whatever reason, that's where they stopped. Just extend this system and you could actually get some low prices. It's easy to try because you can just try it on one or two drugs. Or you don't need to try it across the board. Problem is, it's best if the provinces collaborate. If you only had one province doing this, you're going to run into problems where generics say, well, I don't want to have to offer the same low price to all the other provinces. So thanks very much for your attention.